Hello students. Welcome back to my channel, The Sexy Goddess of Econ. Today, I will continue to cover the concept of price elasticity of demand, this time more in depth using calculus. So, all you interested students out there, please follow, follow me. Okay, in my last lecture, I have shown that the price elasticity of demand of a good is mathematically defined as delta Q over delta P times P over Q. The price elasticity of demand is often abbreviated as PED, or is written with Greek letter, epsilon. Now, let me show you its calculus version. Using calculus, PED is defined as the first derivative of Q with respect to P, times P over Q. Here, DP can be thought of as an infinitesimal change in price, and DQ as the change in Q in response to the infinitesimal change in P. Just for your information, this calculus version of PED is sometimes called the point elasticity of demand. Just so that you know. Next, let's think about its potential linkage with the revenue of a firm. The revenue or the total revenue of a firm can be simply written as price times quantity sold, Q. Please note that here, price appears as a function of Q, rather than the reverse. For your information, P expressed as a function of Q, is called an inverse demand function in economics. Now, let's derive the equation for MR, marginal revenue, from this total revenue equation. Given that marginal revenue is simply the first derivative of the total revenue function with respect to Q, we can see that MR equals P of Q, plus DP DQ times Q. Not too difficult so far, was it, as all we did was some simple math. Now, let's do some more math to find a linkage between MR and the price elasticity of demand. First, let's factor out P of Q from the right-hand side of the equation. Hum. Some of you may be thinking, how do we factor out P of Q when it does not appear at all in the second term? Well, we can do it if we use some math trick as follows. Ha ha. Do you see it? What a neat trick it is. By inserting P in the denominator of the fraction in the second term, we succeeded in factoring out P of Q, at least artificially. Now, if you look carefully at the second term inside the bracket, you'll see that it sort of looks like the price elasticity of demand. I mean, sort of, not quite. The mathematical definition of PED that I've shown was, dqdp, times P over Q. But here, we have dpdq, times Q over P. So, it seems like what we have is the inverse of the definition of price elasticity. In fact, if we utilize the inverse function rule in mathematics, we can see that dpdq equals 1 over dqdp. And using the following equation, which is just derived from the definition of price elasticity of demand, you can see that the whole second term in the bracket on the right-hand side is equivalent to 1 over price elasticity of demand. Therefore, we have marginal revenue equals P of Q times 1 plus 1 over price elasticity of demand, as shown here. Okay now, as a last step, let's do one more simple math trick. Given that the price elasticity of demand is less than zero, if we switch it to its absolute value, then the marginal revenue equation becomes the following. MR equals P of Q times 1 minus 1 over the absolute value of the price elasticity of demand. The switch in sign is due to the value of epsilon being negative. Also, the reason epsilon is expressed as a function of Q is that the elasticity is not constant across different production levels. Even if DQ DP is held constant, P over Q may vary along the demand curve, leading to different price elasticities at different points of the curve. Hence, epsilon is not a constant. Here, some may wonder why epsilon is written not as a function of P, but rather as a function of Q. Well, it's reasonable to think so, but remember, we have all along assumed that P is a function of Q, not the other way around. So, if P is assumed to be a function of Q, a function of P is actually a function of Q. Confusing, isn't it? Blame the darn economists for making this world unnecessarily confusing. Shall I go ahead and condemn your professors on your behalf? Ha ha. Okay, now that we have this MR equation, we can now clearly see its linkage with the price elasticity of demand. From the equation above, we can see that, if the absolute value of epsilon is greater than 1, MR is greater than 0, that is, a positive number. On the other hand, if the absolute value of epsilon is less than 1, MR is less than 0, that is, a negative number. And where epsilon is exactly equal to 1, we have MR equals 0. What this all means is that, at the point where the absolute value of epsilon is greater than 1, as the firm produces more, 
the revenue keeps increasing. By contrast, at the point where the absolute value of epsilon is less than 1, as the firm produces more, the revenue keeps decreasing. Hence, in order to increase revenue, the firm will need to decrease production in this case. What this means is that, if the firm's current production is at the level where the absolute value of the price elasticity is high, the firm will try to produce more, if its objective is to maximize revenue. On the contrary, if the firm's current production is at the level where the absolute value of the price elasticity is low, the firm will try to decrease production, to increase revenue. Until, well, until the point where MR becomes zero. Graphically, what this means is that if the firm's production level is currently at this segment, that is, if the quantity produced is less than Q star, then the firm would want to produce more, to increase its revenue. It will keep producing more until it reaches the point where the absolute value of the price elasticity becomes 1. Similarly, if the firm's production level is currently at this latter segment, that is, if the quantity produced is more than Q star, then the firm would try to produce less to increase its revenue. Again, until it reaches the point where the absolute value of the price elasticity becomes 1. Here, we have just assumed that the firm's objective is to maximize revenue. However, the firm's true objective is to maximize profit, not just revenue. We haven't taken the cost function into consideration here. So, be careful. This analysis is just based on the revenue maximization standpoint, not on the profit maximization standpoint. Also, it should be pointed out that, Perfect competition is not assumed in this analysis. Under perfect competition, price is fixed, that is, just given by the market, and MR just equals this fixed number. Therefore, this analysis assumes that the firm is not a price taker but rather a price setter. That's why all along we have expressed P as a function of Q, not a constant. Hence, do not get confused. Hope today's lecture was very clear. Even though some of you may find economic ideas confusing and difficult to grasp, as you learn more and more, you will get to find them interesting, and even as sexy as I am. So, keep studying. Don't forget to like and subscribe before you go. I will come back with another lecture video soon, so visit again. May God bless you all.